Overclocking has become a bit of a tradition for us here at Computex. But this year, we're going to try something a bit more ambitious using the 28-core Intel Xeon CPU, which is a lot more challenging, but we're going to try and break a 6.5 gigahertz world record anyway. Right now, we're at the G-Skill Computex booth, and over there, they've got the overclocking contest, which has been going on for a few days now. And on this side, we're joined by Joe Steponzi, aka Stepons, yep. who has been my overclocking master since <laughs> last year. Yep. Nice to see you again. Yeah, I go by other names, too. There's a couple of them. You know, King Slacker, Tech Odin. I like that. I've been curious as to how you got into this overclocking business? Because you are, I would say, you're quite well known in this circle. I would, yes, pretty much. <laughs> I, I think it's more the beard than anything, but yeah. Yeah, that helps. Tell me, how do you get into this? Naturally, I work in the PC industry. Like, I do software development and a lot of stuff. So I always needed, like, a beefy laptop. And I used to travel all, all over the world. So I always needed, like, the best laptop. So I started getting more into trying to figure out okay, how can I get more performance, more performance, more performance? When I stopped traveling, I started getting into like the desktop stuff. And so I started souping stuff up, trying different cooling methods, and just, it kind of got out of hand. <laughs> and I guess at some point you had to find yourself some liquid nitrogen just down the street. Well, like I, yeah, so I messed with it. chillers, pelletiers, I went to dry ice, and then the natural, I actually even had a uh, dual cascade phase change system. And then I got it into liquid nitrogen. Went a little hardcore with it. <laughs> I think what we're trying to achieve today is quite ambitious because unlike previous years, this year we have something very, very special, yeah. right? We are looking at the 28-core Intel Xeon W3175X. Yes. That's very hard to get hold of, right? Um, yeah, it's a, there's a lot of, un, uh, what do you say, unobtainium that when it comes to this <laughs> processor and motherboard. I think the processor alone is anywhere from $3,000 to $4,000. What are the challenges of overclocking this particular chip compared to the more traditional, maybe eight core chips from Intel? Well, if you look at the chip itself, it's like massive, it's right. huge. So like, number one, you gotta have a, a mounting mechanism for it. And if you don't have the pressure correct, you might lose memory channels because on this board compared to the older ones, you're doing six channels of memory. So instead of four ch or two channels or four channels, you're doing six channels. So if the pressure on the CPU isn't correct, you'll lose channels and it'll just be a nightmare. So you basically have to get the mount down really well. So what you're saying is because the CPU is so big, yeah. it's harder to get an even pressure? Is yeah, that yeah, yeah to, to get an even mount on it. So let's go through the motherboard and the RAMs, because this uh, motherboard can do a lot of RAM. Yeah, so you can put in 12 sticks of RAM and anywhere up to uh, what, 8 or 16 gig sticks. So that's like, that's a lot of RAM. <laughs> I think uh, it supports up to 192 gigabytes. And I think we've got 96 today, which is still a lot. So we've got an uh, Intel Xeon 28 core processor. We've got the Asus ROG Dominus Extreme motherboard. How much in total do you reckon this is? Uh, let's see, probably, I would say anywhere from like eight to $10,000. Eight to $10,000. Yeah. Well, be better not mess up here. No pressure, but uh, okay. Yeah. Maybe we should cra get cracking and uh, get started. Yeah, I think so. So Joe, uh, even though we've done this together a few times, yeah. maybe you can run us through the process here. What are you paying attention to? Anything well, we, you have to be careful with? We have a thermometer right here. So if you look. So you've got a thermometer over there. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to keep the temperature anywhere between minus 100 to minus 120, depending on the benchmark. My understanding here is that with the this particular 28-core Xeon, I saw a world record of somewhere like 6.5 gigahertz, yes. but uh, that's not real, uh, what I would consider to be a real benchmark, right? Well, no, because it, it's, it's a validation. It's only really using a little bit of the cores, maybe like 10%, if that. You'll have benches like R15, where they do 100% on each core and thread, and it just hammers it. So you, you won't be running 6.5 on that. You'd probably be running about maybe like 5.6, 5.7. And even like that's this. quite impressive, right? Well, no, 5.6, 5.7 on all 28 cores is really impressive, actually. It's pretty beefy. It's almost like you can run it like instantly. And anybody running R15, if you're on like a 9900K, this just like blows it away. I think on CPU-Z, we did around 6.1. Just 
six one. Yeah, validation. Okay. Which is, imagine all twenty eight cores and fifty two threads at six point one gigahertz. Wow. Not R fifteen, but <laughs> still a validation. Right. Okay, I right. see five point four at the moment. Can you remind us why you have to wrap up all these sticks down there? It's kind of it, it's very difficult to like kind of do anything here because the humidity is so bad. So it's almost like if you saw before, you break down the system, redo the system, and then you'll do that a lot here. It's, it's very difficult to keep the system fully running because it just condensates so bad. If you don't wrap up the memory, well, basically your water will develop on them and it will start giving you issues. It will cause a bunch of problems. So you need to kind of wrap it all up and make sure that no water pulls up and basically goes onto the motherboard. Better safe than sorry. You don't want condensation on your motherboard, especially when it costs you like somewhere over eight thousand dollars. Yeah, for real. Uh, I'm just seeing a lot of money here. That's it. It is a lot of money. <laughs> Why buy a car when you can have this setup? I just noticed something. There seems to be a lot of grease all over the motherboard. Yeah, that's the insulation. So okay, so that's that's intentional. Nothing's yeah. melting. No, no, no. A lot of the times they grease up the whole board just in case. Like you, sometimes you drop water off from the pot and stuff. All right. So actual you got to be water. actual water, and it will pool too. So the grease basically creates an, like an artificial barrier. Do you find that it's easier to do this kind of overclocking, especially with liquid nitrogen in places like, oh, I don't know, Las Vegas or some desert yes. island? So the, in Taiwan, the humidity is very high. Like even where I live in Tampa, it's like extremely high. If you go to places like Vegas, you wouldn't even see all this. Hmm. You could bench for like hours and hours. And there's and no hours. ice. And no ice. Okay, Joe, we've just finished our rounds of uh, benchmarking, so to speak. How far did we get this time? Well, not too bad, actually. I mean, pretty much similar to last year, but much better on uh, with a 28 core. So around 5.5-ish five, for R15. I think we did, what, 5.6 on the last year on the 18 core? So, I mean, we went from 18 cores to 28 cores. Well, we also did some CPU-Z around about 6, six gig-ish on all, all 28 cores. So. Not so bad. I mean, you're improving every year. Every Computex is always a pretty much a battle with all the, the humidity. The condensation that gets all over the board is just absolutely ridiculous. And is there anything else we can do to improve things? Um, maybe you grow a beard? <laughs> well, anyway, listen, until the next Computex, I'm going to work on my beard. I think one year should be enough. We'll see how far I get. And then I'll come back and find you and maybe get some more lessons from you to do this liquid nitrogen overclocking. Yeah, you never know what hardware is going to come out. So, you know, I'll be here wanting to overclock. All right, awesome. All right. Well, for everything else from Combitex, stay tuned on Engadget.com.